You guys, Baron Zemo's got his purple mask. All is finally right in the world. Falcon and the Winter Soldier wasted no time in reintroducing Civil War's main villain and putting him right in the action next to Sam and Bucky. But is having him out in the open really that good of an idea? I mean, what could go wrong, right? Today's video is all about Zemo, meaning his MCU origins and how they compare to his comic counterpart. We'll also discuss what his comic backstory might mean for this character's future. Let's get into it right now. Baron Zemo has always been one of the most fascinating MCU villains who doesn't get enough credit. He was the bad guy in Captain America Civil War, but he's often remembered more as just the catalyst to get Iron Man and Captain America to punch each other in the most complicated way possible. But if you actually look at how well he not only formed a plan and followed through with it, but also how effective it was, then I think it's time to start thinking Zemo might be the most successful MCU villain ever. But what did he exactly want? Well, in the MCU, he was a former colonel with the Sokovian Armed Forces and ran a covert Sokovian kill squad. Now, that may sound scary, but it doesn't mean Zemo didn't have a heart. His family still meant the world to him, so that's what makes the events of Age of Ultron even more tragic. When Ultron set up shop in Sokovia and tried to turn it into a giant meteor that would destroy all of humanity, the Avengers were able to save the day and move on, but there was still a massive amount of collateral damage. When the dust cleared, Zemo found the bodies of his father, his wife, and his son all crushed to death, and that set Zemo on a path of vengeance. You see, Zemo is not some I want to conquer the world type of villain. No, he just wants to live in a world without the Avengers and superpowered individuals. The big swerve of Civil War is that we all thought Zemo was trying to release five new super soldiers from Siberia to sell them off, but he actually killed them all because he didn't want more of them out in the world. That brings us to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, where thanks to his past run-ins with Hydra, as well as his desire to wipe out all the Super Soldiers, he makes a valuable ally for Sam and Bucky. Well, for now. Now, the Baron Zemo in the comics is a bit different than the one we see in the MCU, but his backstory is still quite fascinating, albeit less complex. Comic Zemo comes from nobility and a long line of previous Zemos who all grew up believing in the ideals of a master race, and that his line deserved to rule the world. His ideals always put him at odds with Captain America, whom he wanted to destroy but never could. He also wears that signature purple mask for a reason. Early on in his life, a fight with Cap went wrong and he fell into a vat of adhesive X which disfigured him. That's already a little different than the Zemo we've seen in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, with that Zemo seemingly liking to put the mask on while he does his killing because I guess he thinks it looks cool. Anyways, I think the most important thing to talk about with Baron Zemo is all his attempts to form a supervillain team. He's clearly a great tactician with lofty ambitions, so he often finds himself putting together a team of supervillains in order to take Captain America down once and for all. One of the first he organized was the Masters of Evil, which... Well, that's a supervillain team name, all right. His OG squad included Radioactive Man, The Melter, and Black Knight, but of course, things didn't work out. One time, Zemo even died because he was blinded by a glare from Cap's shield and crushed by a rock slide. Don't worry, he got better though. Another one of his super teams was the Thunderbolts, but this was a bit different. There was a time where all heroes were dead and Zemo used this as an opportunity. He formed the Thunderbolts, who posed as superheroes but was secretly the masters of evil in disguise. They would go around pretending to be heroes in certain situations, but then do things like gain government secrets and sell them. It's these team interactions that could shape where the Falcon and the Winter Soldier show is going. Zemo in the MCU doesn't seem like the type of guy who'd want to form a superpowered supervillain team like his comic counterpart. He hates superheroes and he's helping Sam and Bucky because he doesn't want a world filled with super soldiers. But I don't think the show brought back Batroc the Leaper by coincidence. We know from set photos that he'll be back and with another group of villains. So maybe Zemo is going to recruit them for a new secret villain scheme to wipe out all superheroes. Honestly, Zemo's place in the show is a bit of a head scratcher at the moment. When he was announced as coming back with his I don't plan on leaving my work unfinished line, it looked like he was being positioned as the show's big bad. 
But will that really be the case now? The mysterious power broker looks to be the big bad that both Sam and Bucky and the Flag Smashers are all fighting with. And that doesn't include the new Captain America, John Walker. So where does that leave Zemo? Is it going to be a situation where the power broker is beaten in episode 5 and Zemo will rise up and be the last challenge in the finale? Is Zemo somehow secretly the power broker? I mean, that seems super unlikely, but it's got to be someone we know at this point, right? And Sharon's too obvious. Will Zemo be killed with a bit of a redemption arc? Or will Zemo just nicely go back to jail after they stop the super soldiers? Yeah, I don't think that last one is likely. Especially now, since he's got his beloved purple mask back. Whatever Zemo does though, I hope we can see him dance some more. That was an episode highlight. I kind of wish all MCU villains who are still alive would come back and work side by side with our heroes more often. Wouldn't that be fun? This Zemo thing is successful so far, so bring on the Justin Hammer and Ant-Man team up. 